I'd like you to think about a cathedral, a cathedral that you have seen in a book or online, or one that you have visited in person. And if it helps, close your eyes so you can visualize the cathedral. I want you to walk into the cathedral and look up. Look up at the very high ceiling, the beautiful arches that go up to elevate that high roof. How many people do you think it took to put that building in place? Bring your eyes down just a little bit and look out at all of the stained glass windows. How many hands picked the colors to create the patterns to set the glass in the sills that you see around you? Now bring your eyes down and look at all of the pews, perfectly symmetrical, hand-carved, beautifully designed as they lead up to the beautiful altar in front of you. Open your eyes. Come back with me now. This is my favorite cathedral. This is Notre Dame de Paris. It's in the center of Paris. It's actually on the Seine River in a little island called Ile de la Cité. This cathedral was the passionate brainchild of Bishop Maurice de Sully. But the bishop did not build this by himself. <laughs> Absolutely not. He shared his passion with thousands of laborers, of architects, of artisans, craftspeople, stonemasons. And the bishop never saw this cathedral completed. It took 182 years to build the cathedral. So what was started in 1163 didn't even get completed until 1345. That means approximately seven generations of individuals, thousands of craftspeople, worked on the completion of this cathedral. What drove them to do this work day in and day out that they knew they would never see to completion? It was the potential for what this cathedral would bring to generations upon generations after themselves. Think of the millions of people that have admired the physical beauty of this cathedral and also its metaphysical beauty. So why is an educational researcher talking to you about cathedral building? <laughs> I have to teach you something today. <laughs> there are three keys in my mind to thinking about the legacy work that we do. And it's exemplified in cathedral building and it's an exemplified in many of the things that you are all engaged in today. It begins with a passion that becomes shared by thousands. It, it combines a pursuit of wanting to be the very best at something that you can be. And it also involves your ability to see the potential that your work is greater than the day to day, that the work that you do is going to impact future generations. So let's move to modern day cathedral building. I'm going to talk to you about my personal passion. So that's me. <laughs> and I'm wearing my favorite dress at five years old. And it's my favorite dress because that dress made me feel like a teacher. Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a teacher. And so I pursued that passion. I went to school, and I was a camp counselor and a volunteer, and I tutored, and I went to a credentialing program. And finally, I had my very first class. I was a high school teacher, just a few years older than my students. This is Burlingame, California. And I loved my class. I loved teaching my students. But an unintended learning for me being in the classroom was the disparities and the inequities that exist in public education in the United States. And I wanted to make a difference on a national level. So I wanted to connect my passion with the passion of many others who were working towards changing the gaps, closing the gaps on these inequalities. So I actually went back to school to really focus on research and evaluation efforts. And for the past 25 years, I have been fortunate enough to work with teams of individuals in the federal government looking at comprehensive school reform, looking at how we implement common core standards so that all students are college ready. I've been working with foundations to help teachers change their practices across the country. I've been working with state departments and local districts on innovative technologies that we can put in place to improve teaching and learning. 
There's a section of education that I'm particularly interested in right now and I want to speak to you about that is very, very challenged and needs a lot of us to focus on and commit to in order to close the gap. Adult education. 36 million. 36 million adults in this country struggle with reading. This is an issue for them in many, many ways. This limits them in their ability to sustain themselves, to be productive citizens. It limits their ability to persist in ed the education system. And unfortunately, this condition is most likely passed on to their children and their children's children. It is a multi-generational gap that we need to address. And within this population, there is a distinction. The most challenged population are those reading at the third grade level and below. If you are reading at a fourth grade level and above, you may be challenged, but you can read to learn. You can read sentences, you can read paragraphs, and you can make meaning of those words, and you can teach yourself, and you can advance and improve your understanding. You can advance and improve your knowledge. You can go back to school. You can access information. If you are an adult reading at a third grade level and below, you are learning to read. You are learning letters. You are learning the sounds that they make. You are learning combinations. But you're learning maybe a few sight words. But you cannot look at words in succession and make meaning out of them. What does that mean for everyday life? You can't read the instructions on your medication. You can't read a menu at a restaurant. You certainly can't read a newspaper. That's at a sixth grade level. You can't help your children with their work. And unfortunately, many of the things we have in place to teach reading, kindergarten through third grade, are conditions and materials designed specifically for children. Adults don't have the luxury of being able to go to school from 8 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. They have work commitments, family commitments, or you know what? They just may decide they have been there, done that. They are too old for that environment. The materials in place to teach reading K through three are very juvenile. They may not be appropriate for adults. They may not feel comfortable accessing these materials. They may simply want to hide the fact that they struggle with this very, very critical issue. So there is a woman who's been involved in literacy for a very long time. And she really has done tremendous things uh, across the United States former First Lady Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush has a family literacy foundation that has reached uh, thousands of people across the country. But she recognized that there is a real problem in the way we provide outreach for adult literacy. So in her passion, she marshaled the support and resources of two other foundations. One foundation is also committed to literacy. Their name is the Dollar General Literacy Foundation. They're in Nashville, Tennessee. And then she decided to shake it up. She decided to connect with a foundation in Los Angeles, the X Prize Foundation. And this is important because the X Prize Foundation is a foundation that works to solve large global issues using innovative technology and crowdsourcing bringing thousands of people together from multiple disciplines to innovate new ways of closing persisting problems, the gaps on persisting problems. So these three foundations got together and they decided what is the most consistent technology that adults have access to that can be a teacher anytime, anywhere? The cell phone. So as a result, they have brought together educators, researchers, designers, developers, coders, artists to form teams and design literacy apps for the smartphone specifically targeted for adults who are reading at a third grade level or below. That's the first ring. 
The foundations, the second ring, the teams of innovators. The third ring, we're inviting up to 12,000 adults to test these apps out. 12,000. And then in come the researchers, here we come. And we are studying the impact of these adults using these technologies. What is helping? What is hindering? Who is learning with greater acceleration? All the nitty gritty stuff that I love to get my hands dirty with. Okay. So we are also bringing in, here's the fourth ring. We are bringing in community members and we have purposefully targeted three states across the country. We've targeted Los Angeles, California on the west, Dallas, Texas, covering the south, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on the east, because we are creating awareness of these communities about the gap that persists, about the work we are trying, about the opportunity to participate and help. And what we're hoping is that message is going to meet in the middle of the country so that we will create a national awareness about the issues persistent in adult literacy. We know that one app is not going to close the gap. We also know that this work is hopefully going to be picked up by children of the next generation and the generation after that. We're all cathedral builders. We're all laying the bricks. We see the potential in this work. I know you are all modern day cathedral builders too. I look forward to hearing about your legacy work. Thank you.